Hello friends, welcome to our channel Piping Mantra. There are some general considerations for pump piping like suction lines should be rooted as short as possible from the source vessel to avoid pressure losses due to friction. The suction and discharge piping must be supported independently of pump such that very little load is transmitted to pump's casing. The designer may consider the use of expansion joint on either the suction or discharge or both as necessary. However, expansion joint should be used only when it is unavoidable. Pocket shall be avoided in suction line as much as possible. If it is unavoidable, flooded suction to be maintained and arrangement of proper venting should be provided. The line where high pocket are unavoidable shall be reviewed jointly with process or client. The suction of any centrifugal pump must be continuously flooded and the suction piping shall contain no vertical loop or air pocket. A straight length requirement if any of suction or discharge should be followed as per project specific requirement or pump vendor drawing. Suction reducer shall be eccentric type with flat side up to avoid high pocket. Only long radius elbow are to be used at or adjacent to pump suction connection. Pump nozzle allowable load shall be as per standard nozzle load for equipment or project specific standard. Strainer are used in piping system to protect equipment sensitive to dirt and other particles that may be carried by the fluid. Orientation of Y type strainer in the suction line not to be more than 45 degree of vertical. The orientation of T type strainer in suction line can be in horizontal direction. If cone type temporary strainer is provided in PNID then removable spool piece should be provided to facilitate the removal of temporary strainer. There should be enough space for removal of the strainer element in the pump suction line. Designer shall block the removal space area for a strainer in the model. Piping should be symmetrical for pair of pump as far as possible. Discharge piping should clear pump to ensure maintenance space to pump and motor. Removable spool piece should be provided if required in top discharge piping to facilitate the removal of pump. A pipe anchor must be provided between any expansion joint or non-rigid coupling and the pump nozzle that it is designed to protect. When a pump flanges are flat face, mating flanges must also be flat face and the joint made up using full face gasket. Pressure gauge should be visible and should be easily accessible. Wall should be oriented such that wall operator hand wheel access passage should be easily accessible. Wall operator should be accessible and maximum elevation of hand wheel should be as far as standard or project requirement. We have to provide adjustable support for pump or pump alignment. Let's see typical or standard requirement for different type of pumps. First we will see what is pump piping for end suction and top discharge pump. You can see here in typical piping layout, plan view and isometric view. Piping support close to the pump nozzle shall be decided to satisfy requirement criteria of free and sagging. Normally we provide adjustable support however stress engineers shall be review the same. Flat side up eccentric reducer with a straight run requirement as per vendor requirement which is mentioned in PNID should be fulfilled and this reducer can also be considered in a straight run. We have to consider maintainability of the layout like we have reserve space for motor removal and strainer removal. Removal of a spool piece in discharge piping shall be provided for ease of removal of pump. Flange joint shall be outside the pump carrying frame. Pipeline should be self supporting in case of removal spool piece. Keeping in mind all the wall and instrument accessibility, it is preferable to having T in the center for symmetrical purpose. However, it can be offset based on the layout requirement. Here are the some examples for discharge piping. In third option, no need of removal spool and drain is in vertical. We have to avoid this kind of discharge for supporting point of view as load will be transferred to pump nozzle. Okay, the second pump is side suction side discharge pump. You can see different view like plan view and ISO view of side suction and side discharge pump piping. Same like our first case and suction top discharge, we have to provide minimum straight length reducer and pump nozzle should be provided as per pump vendor or project requirement. First support close to the pump nozzle shall be decided to satisfy the requirement criteria of free and sagging. A stress engineer shall review the same. For multi-stage pump, horizontal rotor removal space or access to be provided as per the vendor requirement. Third case is pump piping for top suction and top discharge. Like our two cases, in this also 
minimum straight length between the reducer and pump nozzle to be confirmed from process or by pump vendor or as per the project requirement. Here we have to provide removal spool piece for pump removal. Operating platform if needed to access block wall and strainer shall be provided. A spring hanger if required by stress engineer should be provided as close as possible to elbow based on stress requirement to take care of dead weight and thermal expansion for higher line size pump suction for multi-stage pump horizontal rotor removal space or access to be provided as per vendor requirement. Ascentic reducer at pump nozzle can be considered if line are falling due to much bigger size compared to pump nozzle sizes. Typical isometric view for this category of pump. The next is pump piping for vertical inline pump. Here you can see the plan view of vertical inline pump. Here also we have to provide minimum straight length requirement as per the pump vendor. First support should be close to pump nozzle shall be decided to satisfy requirement criteria of free and sagging. A stress engineer should review the same. This is isometric view for that particular pump. Now we will cover the pump auxiliary piping. Here you can see sample piping plan and section view of that auxiliary piping. However, it varies from pump to pump and type of API seal plan. Pump casing drain, pump base plate drain and seal pot drain normally connect to oily water sewer drain line. However, pump vent and seal pot vent generally connect to the flare header. Generally, cooling water supply and return line connect to cooling water supply and return line. We have to consider for fire water deluge piping and lube oil console. Some of the points we have to consider while routing the auxiliary piping. All small bore line should be routed to and from pipe rack together to ensure common support. These small bore lines should not hinder access to the pump, main line, walls or motor access area. Auxiliary lines should be routed as short as possible with proper access to inline wall and utility connection. Auxiliary line should be routed based on scope demarcation indicated on vendor PNID. Seal plant should be located on the right hand side of the pump by looking from motor side. Lube oil console or seal oil console can be come mounted to pump skid or may come from vendor in separate skid. We should have this information prior to block the space in the model in case it is on separate skid. API seal plant can be referred for getting general information about pump auxiliary piping. Fire water deluge piping shall be routed so that it does not interfere with pump operation and maintenance access area. If deluge piping design is subcontracted, the vendor design should be checked to ensure the safety, egress, operation and maintenance access way. The deluge line can be supported from base frame of the pump but we have to inform the vendor or it has to be considered before the vendor finalization. This is a typical seal plan drawing. This is seal plan 11 which is used for the single seal and this is seal plan 53A which is used for the dual seal. The difference between these two are like in the dual seal we use reservoir to provide the barrier fluid for the pressurized dual seal arrangement. Here are the some requirements for the piping support and piping flexibility requirement. Pump piping should be adequately supported to ensure nozzle load due to piping are within allowable. Line connected to horizontal nozzle should be adjustable support for the maintaining proper alignment. Proper supporting should ensure that no additional temporary support are required for pump piping during maintenance of pump. Here we are showing the different type of routing of suction line to make pump piping as flexible as required for stress consideration. Like in order to get sufficient flexibility the nozzle of source vessel can be oriented as we shown in the figure. Nozzle load on equipment as per vendor drawing. The layout engineer should verify pump settlement if there is no pump settlement, first support of suction or discharge line can be taken from grade or from paving. If settlement problem exists, the first support should be taken from foundation or from pad integrated with foundation. So guys, please do like, share, comment, subscribe to our channel. If you want us to create a video on any topic, please write in comment section below. Share this video with your friend and have a nice day. Thank you.